Today we're looking at the 2015 Borden Cup Men's Open Grand Final. Oh, how about that? It's even better. Count of the day, count of the hour. That is sensational. So Vorden Cup, a weekly competition designed for rep players uh, in the lead up to State Cup. So West with the ball versus Penrith. Sweeper with a, a quarterback addition and the long ball to finish. There's your first try. Let's have a look at that again. So standard sweeper is the setup. Okay, middle, middle with a sweeper coming around. This person will make the touch and normally a basic foundation sweeper is you give it to the sweeper and he tries to beat this offside defender and he has until he's off, uh, onside to beat him. So that's essentially what a sweeper is. However, a variation here is a quarterback. Let's have a look. There's the sweeper coming around. He gets the ball. All standard so far. However, this middle is closing this gate, okay, because this guy's offside. So he's done a really good job to make sure that the sweeper can't dive in between them. However, our link here at the time of the touch was really up high. It was like he was trying to make a touch and knock off a play. He was so high, okay, that he's still offside now. So the quarterback means the ball carrier here is like your quarterback, and then he rips it back to the dummy half. Okay, so we continue this in slow motion. Rips it back to the dummy half. This person here now realizes actually the, the gap between him and the ball carrier. And he now has a three on two. Okay, and not only that, he could have just ran like that from dummy half. But not only that, he is now live because he's received a pass, he can score a try, which means defender here, defender here must be a lot tighter. Otherwise, he'll just score in this space. And because they have to come in tight, long ball, which Dylan Hennessy never gets these ones wrong. Three on two, and there it is there. First try, now Penrith hit back. Let's have a look. Looks like a fade here. Yep, fade four on three. Oh, forgive the uh, arrows. Let's have a look at this. Thought they were deleted arrows. All right, let's have a look at this try. Okay, so middle here has faded. He's dumped on his opposing middle. Okay, and these guys here, one, two, three, must now hold short side because there's less players on that on that side, that's where their priority needs to be. And they open up these three defenders to defend the open side. Whereas the four on three comes from the fact that there's four attackers, three defenders. So the dummy half will take this space, okay? And everyone else will just be running lines, running a hole. Okay, what the dummy half does here, which is really good, is there. That's a long pass. So this middle here, we know he's never gonna let that dummy half run through. At the last minute, he's gonna reach out and he's making the touch. But however, that big long dummy here from this ball carrier will release well, what's called we release this defender. He is now going to chase out because he thinks that rip pass is coming. So he wants to defend the link. Whereas the middle will now have a really nice open hole to hit. And as we continue to play, yep, we continue to play. <laughs> Excuse that. There's the hole. Okay, and it's a try to Penrith. Okay, we'll go from now. Okay, so Penrith now score another try. Bit of a broken defensive policy there from West. Let's have another look at that. So we have our standard sweeper play again, which is a middle, middle ruck. Middle, middle, with a sweeper coming around, trying to de defeat this toucher, trying to beat him. Because he's offside, the toucher's going to have to pull corner, okay, and protect his short side with the only two other players that he's got out there with him. So let's see how this works, though. Because it's an interesting one. The dummy half takes off. However, he looks and this player here is actually recovered. He's tried to take off in a really, really narrow channel, which probably wasn't the play. There was a massive, massive short side out here that he should have just given the sweeper and the sweeper could have just tried to beat him. But because he's taken off open, uh, open side, West have done a good job to man up. However, this, this player here, who was pulling corner, he's turned back in, which is good, but now his whole focus is that ball carrier, okay, which he doesn't need to do. This player here, he's on that. Okay, he's got the ball carrier, so he, he, he just has to lock into his own defender. So while he's looking at the ball carrier, this number four will bounce out, okay, out of his vision. Let's have a look, there's the bounce, and he just catches that West defender wrong-footed, just for that tad. Okay, now he's got a free go to the line, everyone has to crash in. And that's just a lapse of concentration there from the West defender. Penrith in again, second phase, long ball. 
That's good. We haven't actually talked about a second phase on this channel yet, so this is cool. So we have a sweeper again. There's your lead up. I won't have to do any drawing. It's middle, middle. We've spoken about this before. However, this time they do give it to the sweeper. Okay, and while this player is still getting back on side, he's very vulnerable on his inside. So the number seven steps back. This middle's doing a good job. Okay, he shuts down the middle gap. Okay, and this person running a hole, he will get the ball. And because Penrith know that he's going to be shut down, which is this player here. He comes in to make the touch to shut down. The, the player with the ball will do a quick dump. Okay, and because he does a quick dump and the Penrith player get to half really quickly, they actually catch a two-on-one out wide. So there's a quick dump. The, Pen uh, the West boys are still offside and he just gets a ball away nice and quickly. So that's called a second phase. Second phase is when you hit a line and the play reads it and they shut you down. However, instead of going for the line, you get a quick dump and the person gets to half quickly. That's a second phase. So a very nice second phase at that. West now with the ball. Middle, middle. Oh, cool. This will be interesting to talk about. Don't think that was middle, middle actually. Okay, it's middle link, my bad. So middle here dumping the ball to his link. Penrith scored this um, earlier. We called it the four on three. Okay, so the dummy half will go into the three defenders because the touch is pulling short side and he'll have himself plus three others making four attackers. But if you notice what Penrith do here, while it's the middle making the touch, this link is slotting in pretty much parallel with the ruck itself. The middle will actually... I'm just going to play it forward a little bit. Watch what the middle does. He will go all the way to the link position. So he's pulling all the way out here. The reason he can do this is because, well, the link is actually right in front of him. The link is now the one who played the ball. So there's no threat of someone already standing out here. And the defensive link, who has now moved in behind the ruck, steps forward as the middle. And he will step forward right into that ball carrier. He will also release one, two, three defenders to defend man on. Okay, it's what I call a muddle defense. And it's something that Penrith and Sydney Mets are really starting to adapt very effectively. However, Wes, probably one of the best players in the world at the time with the ball, have probably studied Penrith's muddle defense. And they run, as you can see, he's just manning on here. And they run what a basic late switch. Okay, so while he's manned on, he's come off the line really hard. And because he came off the like, look how far in front he is to his other defender. Because he came off the line so hard, Okay, he's very vulnerable on that late switch. We talk about forward momentum. Okay, you increase your speed forward. Okay, but do you you decrease your chances of moving laterally, which is what happened here, and he slips over. So they run that late switch, and they get the three on two right at the end. So smart play from West there, but it is a really nice defensive structure to, to hit a, a team with now and again. So West with the ball. Just a four on three. Broken policy again. Very close, but a nice try. Let's have a look at that broken policy, what I mean by that. So policy in touch. Very basic understanding is if you're in, if you're a middle making the touch, you want to protect the side of your link and wing. Okay, it's like there's a, a division between the two middles. If you make the touch, this is your group of three. These are the guys that you protect, and that's the side that you protect. So you do not get beaten on the side of three that you're defending. Okay, if you want to get beat on the other side, let the other side of defense, one and then two and three, let them sort that out. So when you make the touch as a middle, your body shape should be, I'm gonna to run towards my link, that direction. However, this person here, here, he tries to compete. Yes, he's on side, okay, but he tries to compete open side and push these guys out to their man. However, this dummy half here just basically does a right foot because now that his momentum's going this way, he will step in the other way and he will actually get through on the short side as we continue here, there's your right foot step. And you can see the defender now is just completely buckled. It gets through on the short side. And now it's just basically find some open grass and pick your player. And it's a perfect, perfect pass out to the winger and he just gets it in. That's that's really skillful play there. But that's just a bit of broken policy from the defensive uh, Penrith team. And Penrith hit back again. I like this play. Yeah, nice. They actually had a three on one on the winger. Let's have a look at how this works. It's kind of very similar to the second phase. So four on three again, okay. Middle link, dump, link takes off from dummy half and he's gonna beat the toucher. The toucher's gonna to make sure he's got his short side protected, which he does, forces the player back open side, there it is. Okay, 
Now it just looks like number four is hitting a hole here. It looks like he's giving the short ball. Okay, it looks like he's picked that option. Number four is going to run through and he's going to score. Okay, but West actually defend this really well. Their link comes in to make the touch. Yep, there it is. I'm going to shut it down. Now, rather than making a dump here, they actually do what I call it at social comp. We just call it a flip. They just pop the ball. It's, it's almost like a blind pass over their shoulder. And the person, this player here, just runs around like a wrap. And he'll get it this side. Okay, because it's a blind pass, it doesn't really look like a pass is coming. There it is there. So he's shut down. This player's come around. He pushes. That's a link out there. And we've also got a winger. And you get a, a three on two. Nice. Okay, West have got the ball again. Looks like an ML play. No, that doesn't work. Let's see what they got. Yeah, okay. Interesting. It was a bit of a nothing play. Alright. So it looks like this is middle link. Okay, and they're trying to get this play here as your predominant ball player. Okay, but to do that, you really want one of the middles making the touch. So Penrith have done a really good job here getting the link up and trying to destroy that play. So, I don't know if it was a little bit of a panic from this West player, but he just passes the ball straight to the number 23, which is Dylan Hennessy. Passes him straight to, like he gives him the ball straight away. And again, what's happened here, we've flown off the line. Now, we really only have to do that if we're shutting down the play. Okay, but because everyone, like, this player here is manning up to the 23. Okay, if he was over here, then yeah, flying off the line because he can just beat him. But we've flown off the line, add a man on, we've forced him back this way, and the only difference here is this player slipped over. If he doesn't slip over, he takes him, he takes him, he takes the winger. Okay, that's really the difference here. But, we talk about this guy flying in, if Dylan Hennessy just pop passes over to here, try time, two on one on the right side. But because the player slipped over, we don't probably talk about that. And it's a try. Penrith hitting back. Nice. Good. Oh, they... I'm not sure if this is the case, but there's a player. There's a player here. Looks like he's in the bin. So, we'll, we'll talk about it anyway, and we'll pretend... Look, I'm not sure if they've, if they've got five or not, but we'll pretend that these guys are links. We'll pretend links, and we'll two middle. So we'll, we'll talk about it as if it's it's six on six for for the sake of analysis. But if they score a shorthander, that's really cool. So we've got middle middle here. They run what's called a boy play. I didn't name it. That's just what we call it. So it's a quickie. It's a quickie setup. He'll split short, okay. And the quickie they give to this player here, and he tries to basically weave his way in or outside of the offside player and score at their feet, okay. But a boy play, they know that this player here is going to be pulling corner. They know he's going to be protecting his short side. He does that automatically. So they know his momentum is going to be away from the camera to, the, to that side of the field. Now, if the dummy half takes off this way, this defender now has to chase the dummy half because that's his player. So if you've got one middle moving this way and another middle moving this way, all it's going to take now is the person that played the ball to run into that space. Okay, so dummy half. So look at the gap between the middles now. This guy's still offside. Okay, this guy's manned up here. I don't know why the link's flying in. Doesn't need to do that. And yeah, he just throws the flick pass back into the middle. Try. Boy play. Oh yes, and, and that guy as well, clapping. Well done. Nice try, Penrith. Okay, again that 23, Hennessy on fire. So Wes score this try. It's just a four on three again. There it is. Makes the touch. Okay, middle link play the ball. Link out a dummy half. This guy will pull corner as he should. This guy will man up to him. And it's a four on three. Okay, so all the attackers are going to be hitting holes. And the ball carrier will, will choose his man. So we continue. Leaves the pass nice and late. Throws short. But as we can see, when he throws short, 
Because there's a lot of space between him and the line, the Link actually backpedals. He gets a little bit deep, and by that I mean here. Okay, so he just, in his mind, he wants to give himself a little bit of extra time to make a decision whether to come in or out. Okay, and to do that, he basically extends the distance between him and the ball. Okay, but now the person with the ball, it's his job at a three on two. That's the downside to it. He gets the three on two and he passes to the winger and the winger goes in untouched. So again, just a four on three. It's baseline touch football. It's a it's a play that it's not really that fancy, but it still works and it's still done by the most elite of all elite teams. Again, very close to a four on three platform here. Four on three. Let's have a look at that one. Came by very quick. Unless have just subbed on. Okay, so what Penrith have tried to do, if they can get their link making the touch, which is what happens here, the link is making the touch, okay, theoretically this player will run straight into a middle, this is the middle, but the middle should be back here. So if this middle, I'm going to draw a middle here, if he's back next to the other middle, the dummy half is going to pick up and run straight into the middles, who are just going to be man on. Okay, so if the link can make that touch, that's good for the defense. They can't get the four on three. However, this link is up almost where the touch is being made anyway, so it's kind of redundant. They're still offside. They're both together now. They're both offside. So the link's done good, but the middle needed to get an early read and get back on side nice and quick. So yeah, the four on three will still work. However, this time they try to gun it short side. So they know that this guy's gonna pull corner. This guy's gonna pull corner. Okay, and this time they take off short side, which is great. Okay, but you're probably going to get touched. So what happens here? The guy that dumps the ball will switch back late. Okay, and just counter the momentum. Let's have a look. Everyone's going one way and there's the late switch. Okay, the Lynx read it. He's coming to make a touch. However, the middle, too busy chasing. Didn't even see it. And now this guy will propel back into the gap for your four on three, but he can score the try. So the gap now here has to be nice and tight to shut off the dive. Everyone else needs to come in. Okay, and he just picks the right option, which in this case is the long pass. Winger did a really good job to read it. But the link for Wes knows his job isn't done, and he will back up on the inside. Tap in. Nice try. Okay. Another middle-middle long ball play. Oh! Oh! It was intercepted. Let's look at that. It's a bit of a slow play, this one, considering. So we've got middle-middle with the ball. Okay, so this is middle-middle. Now, again, we're gonna get a, we, we can get a four on three with middle-middle. It's, it's actually quite simple. The middle will just split the other way and run this hole. The link will run this hole, and the winger can keep the width. Okay, but it's very important to split the right way. All you're doing is splitting, so you can allow the dummy half to attack the offside player or the guy that made the touch, because he's the one that's offside. Okay, so he'll split back to the open. And there it is there. There's your four on three. It was just a little bit slow. That's also, I was a bit confused as to what was going on. He picks the long pass. Let's see what happens here. It looks like it's going to get intercepted, which it's pretty much intercepted there, but it comes loose of the West guy's grip and Penrith's catch it. So it's just an intercept, lost ball, a double intercept, and Penrith score. So I believe we're in, uh, we're in drop-off territory now. Now, the rule in 2015 for a drop-off was you dropped one player off, played two minutes five on five. If there was no, tr no scoring after that, you go to four on four. And if there was no scoring after that two-minute period, you go to three on three. And at three on three, you just play until someone scores a try. I've seen drop-offs with this rule go for 25 minutes before. Luckily for us, West get the ball. It's still at five on five. Which teams don't really practice 5-on-5. Five five. I wonder if that was a, a contributing factor to why they changed the drop-off rule, which now is straight to 4-on-4. Four four. Let's see what West do. Last touch. Penrith get the intercept here. Now, the call here is when Dylan Hennessy threw that pass, it actually touched a Penrith hand, and then the person who caught it was in front. I actually... Wasn't sure about this call, and then I asked the referee, and that's what he said. And when you slow it down, it does make sense. So he caught it in an offside position. They actually batted it forward. So it's a good call here. It's one that not a lot of refs would pick up. Let's have a look at this play. The four on three shape, and there's that late switch again. It's a little bit more difficult to, 
to grasp when it's five on five. Let's imagine uh, that this is... Well, anyway, let's just talk about a five on five. It is very hard to because no one plays five on five anymore. There's still short side. Yep, kind of, because the other side's the exact same amount of players. So this <laughs> the person making the touch has actually got to do a little bit more job of competing or playing man on, which he does. Everyone else can try and mark their players, and he just tries to chase him. Okay, so he's trying man on, man on, man on, but there's that late switch. Okay, now a rule of thumb is, defender, never dive at the dummy half. There's no reason for you to dive at the dummy half. You may get them, yes, but if you miss, then you've pretty much blown your chances. Okay, we only really dive when someone is threatening the line, threatening the score. It's a last resort to stop a try. Now, dummy half can't score, so we don't, we don't need that desperation to stop the try. If he keeps his footing there and reads that switch, he makes the touch now. But because, he's do because he dove, that allows a massive three on two. One, and he's got two guys out here to one, two defenders. And Hennessy with the ball. I'm surprised he didn't uh, choose the short ball. He chooses the long ball. But too much space for one winger to recover anyway. And Wes managed to score, and that wins the game for Wes. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, we hope to see you on another episode of Touchscreen's Game Analysis that will be out soon. Thank you. Bye.